place says it closes at 11. You want to just maybe grab a little early lunch then? It's fair to say we're not your typical bicycle tourists. We don't really strive for a lot of miles a day. We stay up late. We wake up and get going late. But it seems to work for us. And so, after a late breakfast of pizza and coffee, after finding a bottle of the local apricot liqueur, we were off to explore the Wachau. The Wachau Valley was a draw for people perhaps as long as 32,000 years ago, and Melk and Krems, a city downriver, were well established centuries before the Common Era. From the 9th century onward, wine was grown throughout the valley. Terraces were carved into the hillsides to maximize yield, monasteries built, and in the year 2000, the region was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its medieval landscapes and agriculture. The Wachau is Austria's largest fruit-growing region, with apricots, known as Melillen locally, being the main crop. In addition to being a fine fruit in its own right, it's used in syrups, marmalades and preserves, and liqueurs like the one we packed in our panniers this morning. but by far the region is best known for its vineyards, with dry white wines like Grüne Weltleine and Riesling being the dominant varietals, although red wines are also produced here. Check this out, flood waters, those are the marks, those are the high water marks. Here in uh, 2014, 20, no in 2002, that's how high it was. I think we're on the wrong, we took a lot, wrong turn. The Wachau was probably the most popular tourist destination in Lower Austria, and the fact that it was a Sunday meant the roads were fairly packed with cyclists. Not a problem since, well, they're bicycles and there was a festive atmosphere all along the route today.
The ride through the valley is a fabulous mix of vineyards, orchards, lush vistas, and enchanting villages. Highlight of the valley is probably Dernstein, which sits on a scenic promontory above the river. Above the town stands the ruins of Kulmringer Castle, where for four months in 1293 Richard the Lionhearted, King of England at the time, was imprisoned for refusing to respect the Austrian flag. Dernstein Abbey, with its striking tower, is a prominent Baroque landmark. It was here that the crowds were at their thickest, and we decided to push on to Krems, a few kilometers downriver. After bouncing along the narrow streets of Krems, we found a lovely park to take a break in. Hoping to get us a bit closer to Vienna for our ride tomorrow, we continued on to Treismauer, toasting a truly incredible day with our Marillen schnapps. We experienced our first morning without breakfast and rode some miles before our first cup of coffee. The day was pretty non-eventful until we found ourselves swallowed up by the metropolis of Vienna. The city holds over two million souls, one-third of the nation's population, and after weeks on quiet rural paths, we had to pick up our game quickly. We found a very nice Airbnb next to the Vienne West Bahnhof and then settled in and began to enjoy Vienna. Vienna is so full of grace, of classical perfection and idealism, so easy on the eyes. It's hard not to love this city. And with our bikes stashed safely in our apartment, we were free to roam and to be civilized for a few days. It's hard to think of a better place than Vienna to be civilized.
We couldn't leave Vienna without exploring the Austrian Gallery Belvedere, the National Art Museum located in the sumptuous Belvedere Palace. Their collection of Gustav Klimt is the best in the world. We found ourselves at the point of decision. It had been a dizzying few weeks. We still had some time left before Juliana had to be back to work. Where to from here? Bratislava? Prague? Or back to Switzerland? As they say, stay tuned, because there are still a couple of small chapters of our European adventure left untold. <laughs>